Welcome to a new vlog, one that I'm very excited about because we're going to be talking about Flux and Flux is something that I use almost every day, plays an important role right here on my workbench because without Flux I would not be able to do my job. So if you've done any sort of serious soldering you must be familiar with gel flux it's the stuff that we use for improving the quality of our soldering and myself specifically for the past 10 years or so i've been using the uh, amtec uh, gel flux the nc559 uh, v2 um, this has been working great for me it was kind of difficult to get in the eu but i had a reliable supplier who sold uh, this genuine amtec flux it was expensive, but a little goes a long way. So one of these large uh, 30 gram syringes was lasting me like four years. So for me, it was well worth paying a little extra to get the good genuine stuff from the European supplier. And uh, this, th this stuff massively improved every single soldering job I had to do. Now, if you ever purchased uh, Amtec cheap flux from Amazon or AliExpress, then for sure that was fake and I'm not even going to go into that with this uh, video it's a whole nother topic i'm only going to speak about genuine flux in this video so one day when i noticed that you know this syringe was almost uh, running out and i went online to my usual supplier to order another one uh, i found out that they don't carry the product or the brand anymore that was strange i mean yes the product does come from the united states it's not easy to import in the eu but if they already had a supply chain going, why stop? Further research showed that the product cannot be sourced reliably in the EU anymore. No reputable suppliers were offering this Amtec Flux anymore. What's going on? Well, there's a bunch of official and unofficial speculation on a Reddit thread. I will link it in the description so you can have a read. Uh, apparently, even Amtec joins the conversation at some point. Um, I'm not sure who to believe, who's the, the bad guy, who's the good guy in this discussion. All I care about is that I can no longer get the Amtec uh, flux in the EU. And um, there is now another brand called Styri that apparently is run by the people who actually formulated the original Amtec flux. But now they've um, created their own brand um, and they're offering newer improved formulas. And uh, that's what I'll be um, going forward with. So the whole purpose of uh, today's video is to actually test and review the new Stereo brand Flux which is available at our friends lshop.eu which I will link in the description. Definitely check them out. They're a reliable source for test equipment and now the Stereo brand Flux is in Europe. Lshop has kindly provided these syringes with the different types of Flux for free for the pur purpose of this review. But if you're located in the US for example uh, you can buy the Steri brand directly from their website or from Amazon. So what I have here today is four different types of flux under the Steri brand. I have the ASM TF, the V2 TF, the V3 TF and the all new V5 TF. These are the 10 gram syringes and with each syringe I received a plunger uh, plus three needles. They're also available in 5 gram and 30 gram options. And apart from these four uh, flux types shown here, there are other variants available. For example, there is one called Hydra uh, TF, which wasn't available in stock, so we can't test that one today. Uh, and in addition to that, they're also offering solar paste from the Steri brand on lshop.eu, and I will definitely be checking that out in a future video. So what are the differences between the different models? Well. I do have the uh, different uh, data sheets uh, printed here with the exception of the V5 which is kind of a new formula for which they haven't yet published a data, data sheet but I also have some official info from Steri which tries to explain the difference between the different models in fewer words so we don't have to delve into all of the details given in the data sheets. So Steri says that all of these fluxes are no clean most are rosin based, low activity, rolled zero fluxes, and they're suitable for BGA rework. Now the differences lie in the, their viscosity, the scent, the halogen content, the initial flux color, the longevity between top-ups, uh, the transparency, the residue color, and the tackiness. Then they separate into three categories based on halogen contents and rich compliance. Now for the halogenated uh, chloride activated non-rich compliant we have the 
V2TF designed for mid-temperature alloys with pine-like smell with no UV tracer and the ASMTF which is like universal compatibility low mid uh, temperatures uh, lead free uh, temperatures as well this is odorless and uh, it contains a UV tracer then there are the halogenated chloride activated rich compliant versions like the V3TF currently their best selling universal compatibility sweet scent rich compliant contains a new uh, uv tracer and then there is the v4tf and httf which i don't have here those have higher boiling points and then in the third category there are the halogen free chloride free rich compliant fluxes like the lthf tf uh, lead free low temperature flux then the asm uhf tf which is their universal uh, roll zero compatible flux designed for broad application use odorless then there is the uh, new v4 hftf again universal compatible flux with a pleasant sweet scent unique rosin uh, and resin blend for superior performance and finally the one that i have here the new v5 tf again broad compatibility flux with a pleasant sweet scent suitable for high reliability applications formulated with the best ingredients available on the market delivering the lowest smoke output and exceptionally clear residue this one is supposed to be the best of the best that the brand can offer now additionally where you see this uh, qc aid logo that means the flux also contains the uv marker which helps with quality control because any flux residue will show up under an uv black light and i'll overlay an image of how that looks on screen it basically helps you when doing quality control over a pcb to identify that there is flux residue left on that pcb and it hasn't been properly cleaned because even though a flux can be safe to be left on a, on a PCB, it's marked as no clean, there are several reasons why you might want to clean that. For example, if you're going to put the board through a separate process for applying some form of uh, conformal coating, that will not stick to the board if there's flux residue. So that's one reason why you might want to clean your board in production. So now let's do a bit of testing to see which one of these uh, stereo fluxes I prefer. Uh, this is obviously going to be a bit subjective as I've been a fan of the Amtec NC559 V2 for so long. I am told that the Steri V2 is probably the closest to that, but I'll try to do a few tests that I consider important to try and distinguish between the different types. First, I would like to get like a general subjective feel for what it is like to actually solder a pin header connector, a multi-pin uh, connector using each one of these fluxes. I'll then evaluate the smell and amount of smoke they produce. Not that you'd want to inhale these fumes or smell them, but inevitably while working with a flux, you will smell it even with a fume extractor, so that matters. Then I would like to evaluate the amount of tackiness and spread for each formula. Is it going to make a big mess when it's heated? Is it going to change color, evaporate too quickly at high temperature, or is it going to be uh, smoking too much, or uh, how long does it stay liquid and uh, to help with soldering during extended um, high temperature soldering attempts. Then I would like to evaluate how easy it is to clean these fluxes with a dedicated uh, flux cleaner because I always clean my board so that's important for me uh, for these fluxes to be um, easily cleanable off the PCB surface. Just for reference this is the leaded no clean solder that I'll be using for this test and I know that you're supposed to be matching the solder and the flux content in the in the solder with the additional flux that you're adding for soldering but uh, to be honest about it like most people will not be matching that they will be using whatever solder wire they have at their workbench um, so I think what I'm doing here is actually closer to a real world scenario and for the actual soldering, I will be using my uh, JBC T245 with a knife tip. And the uh, soldering station is set right now to 350 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much a standard value at my workbench. Again, these factors uh, will affect the soldering quality and the way the uh, flux behaves. But, you know, everyone will have their own settings at their workbench. You're not going to be necessarily, you know, changing your whole uh, workflow just because you got some new flux 
So here is me applying the different fluxes and then soldering a dual rope in header. Now these uh, test PCBs that I'm using, while they are inic gold plated, they're not new. So they feel a bit tarnished. They have a thin oxide layer formed because they're at least two, three years old. Uh, but that makes it perfect for this test because it will give these uh, fluxes a real world scenario where there might be some oxide layer. And my general feel for this uh, soldering session was that you know, pretty much all fluxes I've tested performed well in terms of how they wet the joint, how the uh, solder took to the joint and how it flowed. They all felt pretty good. Of course, that's subjective, but then uh, I'm going to add the things that I noticed different, which I think are pretty objective. Now, in terms of smell, the uh, Steri V2 had the nicest smell out of the bunch. Uh, it was a combination of something sweet plus a bit of pine smell. The next best in terms of smell was the Steri V5 and the Steri V3, which also had a sweet smell, uh, but like an order of magnitude less intensive. Then the Steri ASM and the Amtec NC559 V2 were pretty much odorless, with the Amtec feeling the least nice to breathe in out of the bunch. But again, you're not supposed to breathe in these. Uh, just use a fume extractor. I also noticed different smoke content with the Steri V5 producing the least amount of smoke followed by the Steri V2 and V3. Now the Steri ASM and Amtec 559 V2 definitely felt like they were producing more smoke. I did try to apply equal amounts of flux for each uh, soldering attempt, but since I'm doing it by hand, there will obviously be some variation. So this next evaluation might not be the most accurate, uh, but looking at the flux residue in a bit more detail, we do notice a difference in the uh, distance, the residue, the flux residue spread from the solder joint. So it looks like these theory V2 and V3 and V5 spread equally less than the Steri ASM and the Amtec 559 V2. But overall, there was no spattering, no massive overflow. So the whole bunch generally performed well on this test. It's just that I feel like the V2, V3 and maybe V5 took the lead. In terms of the color of the residue, not sure who cares about this, but I'm going to evaluate it. I mean, it does matter it, because it kind of determines the, the smoking burn point of the flux. Um, so with this black solder, ma solder mask, it's pretty hard to see, but you can definitely tell that the Steri V2 showed more yellowish residue while all of the others were more uh, clear and translucent. And this will be even more uh, visible in the next uh, testing that I'll be doing. Because now I'm going to add just a small drop of flux to one of these square pads, then heat it up with the hot air station set at 400 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. Then, you know, using the remaining flux, uh, I'm going to try to solder a blob of solder with my soldering iron. So this will show us how well the flux tolerates high temperatures for extended periods of time, how quickly it evaporates, if it burns, and after all of this, is it still effective for the actual soldering. Now, I know that the uh, soldering wire that I'm using does have a flux core. So even if the flux completely burns off, this is still going to help uh, with soldering to a pad. But I just don't have any uh, solder wire uh, without a uh, flux core. And by looking at the results of this test, we can again notice a few differences between the different uh, fluxes. For example, the Steri V2 and the Steri ASM seem to produce the most yellowish uh, residue from this test with the Steri V5 and closely followed by the Amtec NC559 being the winners in terms of uh, almost no discoloring. So they these fluxes can clearly take the higher temperature um, better. In terms of how well the pads took the solar blob after the flux was um, heated up and evaporated, well, they all took it equally well. And that's partially due to the fact that I'm using uh, solar wire, which has a flux core. So even if the flux burns out, um, there is still some more in the actual core of the solar wire. So no difference in, in the way these pads took the solder. Now, as a last step, I'm going to be um, uh, using this uh, flux cleaner uh, to test how easy these fluxes clean off the board. This is my go-to flux cleaner. It works great for me. It's made in the USA. So again, hard to find in the EU and kind of expensive, uh, but it works really well. 
A uh, quick note here, all of these uh, fluxes are spec to be cleaned with, you know, flux cleaner, specially designated flux cleaners. Uh, but if you're using the Hydra uh, type of steering flux, uh, which is formulated to be cleaned uh, with water, you might find that it cleans easier with water than with a special flux cleaner. And of course, if you wish to do so, uh, and it might make sense in a different scenario, you can pop this, these into an ultrasonic cleaner with a special uh, PCB cleaning detergent, and that will work uh, even better for cleaning off these uh, fluxes. But for me on the workbench, where I typically do small soldering jobs, it's just not worth the effort to heat up the ultrasonic cleaner for a quick uh, cleanup. Um, I'm always going to be reaching for a spray and a lint-free cloth. In terms of how well the flux residue uh, can be cleaned up, I'm going to start overlaying some close-up images so you can get a, uh, a better feel for what happened. I'm only noticing a difference on the Steri V3, which seemed to have a little bit of residue left in between the dual uh, row uh, pin header. I, again, this is a very manual process. I'm not sure if I maybe applied a little bit scrubbing to this one compared to the others, uh, but that they all perform pretty well and they cleaned up pretty well. And I'm not sure how much of that is due to the flux itself and how much it is to the actual flux cleaner that I'm using, which is really good. So this can probably clean any flux. But it's nice to see that there are no uh, problems with cleaning these fluxes. Before giving you my final conclusion, let me also show you that Steri does provide this comparison chart on their Discord server, so together with the things mentioned in this video, it should give you a better picture of which particular variant you should go for. Myself, I'm going to switch to using the Steri brand and particularly the V5 Flux because it has several advantages over the others and these are things that matter to me. For example, it produces less fumes, leaves less residue, can withstand higher temperature without burning and it's still effective even after extended heating while still having a sweet uh, smell. And it's also halogen free, although that isn't necessarily high on my list. Yes, the V5 will be like $3 more expensive, but like I said, this thing lasts me for years. So for me, it's not a problem paying $3 extra to get the best flux. But if that's a concern for you, the V3 will give you very good performance as well. I'm definitely not going back to Ampec. Well, first of all, because it's really hard to source the genuine stuff in Europe because none of the uh, well-known distributors uh, is offering Ampec anymore. I also think there's some shady stuff going on where I, I personally believe that Amtech uh, took advantage of their market position and resources to enforce maybe some of their prior agreements they had with the guys that were formulating the fluxes for them. So I'm happy that they spun out into a different company, Steri, which continues to innovate and produces these uh, high-tech fluxes. You should also take a look at the Steri HT, which is also a very interesting flux. I don't have it here, but it has been specially formulated for high temperature soldering. So that can be extra helpful in those board repair scenarios where you have to desolder, for example, an HDMI connector from a multi-layer high density board, which will require heating it up to high temperatures for extended periods of time. But I would also be interested uh, in hearing your feedback. Have you used uh, any of the Steri fluxes so far? And are you willing to give the new V5 a try? Because it's certainly a step up in flux technology and I'm pretty sure you will like it. Let me know in the comments below. And should you decide to order the Sturry Flux and you're in the EU, definitely check out our friends over at lshop.eu, link in the description. This way you're guaranteed to get the genuine stuff and top service. But like I mentioned, this is also available directly from Sturry's website and from other resellers in the US. That was all for today and I will see you in the next video.